today I'm going to show you how to build a solar charger with four fast USB charging ports. Firstly, we begin with the solar panel. It's rated at 12 volts and 20 watts. Before moving on, the solar panel has to be tested, in this case, by shining a light over the solar panel and watching the voltage rise. The next component we'll be using is a USB fast charging board. Each charging board contains a small block converter in order to lower the voltage. Now, due to the fact that you won't oversee a sun outside, we're gonna build a power bank in order to store the energy for when we need it. To make the power bank, we're gonna use some vape batteries. To salvage a battery from a vape, the back cap is removed, then the positive and negative wires are desoldered from the battery. After salvaging enough batteries to get a 3S 14P configuration ready to move on to the charging process. Now the reason why we're pre-charging these batteries is because if you would have a fully charged battery connected to a close to dead battery, a high current flow will occur which might damage the battery. After all the batteries are fully charged, it's time to move on to the battery pack assembly. Now to join the battery terminals together, we're gonna use 12 gauge solid wire, then remove the insulation, then flatten it out, And finally, the wire can be tinned with solder. After all four wires are ready, the connections can begin. To begin the connections, we need to divide the battery in three. And then put a layer of scotch tape around the batteries to keep it in place while soldering. Fun fact about the 17350 batteries against the 18650 batteries is that these batteries are joined by soldering, 18650 batteries are joined by spot welding. After two cells are done, it's time to connect the third cell. This is a BMS. To understand how it works, we're gonna connect a LED and a resistor in series to the three discharge resistors. Next would be to connect the input of the BMS to a constant current power supply greater than the voltage of the battery. In this case, 19 and a half volts. And due to the fact that this is actually a computer power supply, which is a constant voltage power supply, not a constant current power supply, we're gonna use a resistor to limit the current. After about 2 minutes, 
two LEDs lit up. And as you can see, the voltage of the right battery is 4.19 volts, which is the maximum voltage of a lithium ion battery. And the voltage of the middle battery is at 4.21 volts. Then the voltage of the left battery is at 4.17 volts. Which is the reason why that LED is not fully on. After all the cells are fully charged, as you can see, all the LEDs are lit up. Now that the testing is done, we can put some double-sided tape onto the battery pack in order to secure the BMS in place. For the charging, a second BMS will be installed. To close it up, thus giving it a better look, I 3D printed a enclosure for the battery pack. At this point, the USB charging boards can be glued on to the enclosure. In this case, I'm using super glue. To protect the USB ports from breaking loose over time, we're gonna put some glue to hold it in place. In order to be able to know the capacity of the battery, we're gonna install a mini voltmeter. This is UV resin. It's just like epoxy, but is cured by UV light. To switch the battery pack on and off, we're gonna install a switch. For the power wiring, we're gonna use 16 gauge silicon stranded wire. For the input and the output, I put together two XD60 wires. After both the switch and the inputs and output ports are in place, we're ready to glue it to the enclosure. And after that is done, the glue can be solidified with UV light. After all the components are installed, the wiring can begin. For the USB ports, we're using 20 gauge wire and connecting them in parallel. For the battery pack to stay in place, we're gonna use double-sided foam tape. Now that the battery pack is in place, we can finish up the power wiring. Before we close up the battery pack, we insert two sponges in order to protect all the parts from vibration. After doing that, we can finally close up the battery pack. To give the solar panel the ability to catch sun from an angle, we're gonna build a stand for it. Starting by drilling holes into the solar panel, then grinding a screw to give it an angle so it should stay in place while tightening it.
Now instead of using a regular nut, we're going to use a wing nut so it should be easier to tighten it or loosen it. To get the battery pack to stick to the solar panel, we're going to put on some velcro onto the battery pack. Then clean the solar panel in order for the velcro's adhesive to stick well. For the last part we will put on a sticker that will show which port is the input and which port is the output and then put on another sticker which will show the specs of the battery pack. Now it is truly ready for a test. Now if you like this video then please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell in order not to miss any of my new videos.